I was a boat stuck in a bottle that never got the chance to touch the sea. Just forgot on the shelf, no wind in the sails, going nowhere with no one but me. I was one in a hundred billion, a burnout star in a galaxy. Just lost in the sky, wondering why everyone else shines out for me. But I came to life when I first kissed you. The best me has his arms around you. Can make me better than I was before. Thank God I'm yours. I was a worn out set of shoes, wandering the city streets. Another face in the crowd, head looking down, lost in the sound of a lonely melody. An empty pocket set of roulette, always landing on a lost bed. And just live for the spin, and hope for the wind, go all in just to lose again. But I came to life when I first kissed you. The best me has his arms around you. Make me better than I was before Thank God I'm yours The worst me is just a long gone memory You put a new heartbeat inside of me You make me better than I was before Thank God I'm yours oh. Stuck in a bottle that never got the chance to touch the sea. us and bless us 
and make his face shine on us. Let us pray. Loving Father, we are grateful for your goodness in permitting us to gather as the family and friends of Ryan and Michelle to share their joy on this special day. Look with favor on them, strengthen their confidence in your firm promises, and assure them of your abiding love. As your son Jesus graced the wedding at Cana with his presence, so may he be with us who pray in his name. Amen. I chose three short scripture lessons for you today, one of them being the basis for the message that I will share with you. The first scripture lesson comes from Joshua chapter 24, verses 14 and 15. And these words serve as an encouragement to let your house be one where you serve the Lord. Now fear the Lord and serve him with all faithfulness. Throw away the gods your ancestors worshipped beyond the Euphrates River and in Egypt and serve the Lord. But if serving the Lord seems undesirable to you, then choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve. For the gods your ancestors served beyond the Euphrates are the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are living. And as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. The word of our Lord. The second lesson is from Matthew chapter 7, verses 24 and 25. This also serves as an encouragement to you to build your marriage on a foundation that will last, a foundation that will help you weather any storm as husband and wife. Jesus says, Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house. Yet it did not fall, because it had its foundation on the rock. The word of our Lord. And then the message that will serve as the basis for this, the reading that will serve as the basis for the message today is from 1 John chapter 4, verses 7 through 12. Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, because God is love. This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only Son into the world, that we might live through him. This is love. Not that we love God, but that he loved us, and sent his Son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Dear friends, since God loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God. But if we love one another, God lives in us, and his love is made complete in us. The word of our Lord. Love is one of the greatest emotions that any of us could ever experience. It's led many people just like you to a day like this, to a place like this, to express your sincere desire to love each other until death parts you. And yet, as many of us know, the success rate of marriages isn't all that great, as many marriages end in divorce. Uh, no family is immune from that. My family's not immune from it. Uh, no couple is immune to that either. So that reality might make us ask the question, well, how can two people who stand together on a day like this and express their love to each other how can they so easily break the vows that they make before God in many witnesses? The answer might be more simple than you think, in that such people didn't have true love. I'm not saying that people didn't stand before each other in love with each other, but they likely didn't have the love that John speaks of here in 1 John chapter 4. So it begs the question, what makes this love so difficult for people to attain and hold on to? Well, whether we like to admit it or not, the one we love more than anyone or anything else is ourselves. By nature, every thought we have or desire we have revolves around me, myself. So I will naturally love someone as long as they love me as much as I love myself. But if that person stops loving me as much as I love myself, that's where problems can begin to happen. And you can see how that is a problem and a danger to a marriage. Perhaps what also plays a role in this is when we think about love, we're often thinking about that dictionary definition of love, which defines love as this intense, deep feeling of affection. No doubt love is a feeling, like you feel something for each other. But if love were based on nothing more than a feeling, 
then it might stand a reason why people seem to fall in and out of love so easily. Because truth be told, there will be days in your marriage where you feel like you love each other more than on other days. But there might be more days where you don't feel like you love each other at all. And on those days when you don't feel like you love each other, does that mean your marriage is over? Of course not. Because your marriage isn't based on the feeling of love, your marriage is based on the commitment to love. And that is what the Apostle John is talking about here in 1 John chapter 4. When he uses phrases like, God is love, and we love because he first loved us. If God's love were based on a feeling, God would never love a single one of us. Because there's nothing lovable about us. Not when we every day throw his love back in his face through our sin and our selfishness. But thankfully, God's love for us is not based on a feeling. His love is based on a commitment to love. And that commitment led God to act. It led him to do something. And what God did is he gave us his very best, most prized possession when he sent his son Jesus into this world to live for us, to bleed for us, to die for us, and to rise for us. So that when we either die in this life or when Jesus comes again, we will stand before him forgiven and eternally saved. And God did this not because we deserved it or that we had done anything to deserve it, he did it because he was committed to each and every one of us. This is the love on which you are able to build your marriage. And you are able to show this love to each other within your marriage. So on those days when you do things or say things you regret, you do things and say things you wish you hadn't done, which, trust me, it will happen. On those days and in those times, you can still love each other and have that committed love for each other because God was committed to you to the point of death. And even more than that, when those things happen, when you say and do things you regret and you wish you hadn't done, you can then also forgive each other because your God has forgiven you in Christ Jesus. A Lutheran pastor once said this. He said, Godly love is the willingness to inconvenience yourself to bring benefit to somebody else. I'll just repeat that again. Godly love is the willingness to inconvenience yourself to bring benefit to someone else. If it has not happened already, today it is no longer about you as an individual, but it's about each other. It's about inconveniencing yourself for the other person because your God inconvenienced himself for you through Jesus Christ. It is this godly love that is willing to inconvenience itself for each other that can allow married couples to stay married even after the fun is all gone, even after those exciting feelings you have in your stomach, those butterflies, whenever you see each other, and those things go away. And that is because your love isn't based on a feeling. It's based on the commitment to love, the commitment that God had to love you. And so with love, this kind of love, your marriage is on a rock-solid foundation. Because this kind of love is love that never fails. And so the vows that you are going to make here in a few short moments, they will not be empty promises, because they will be based on that committed love of your God. This is the love that people are desperately searching for. By the grace of God, this is the love that you now have. And so as you now begin your married lives together, that committed love of God will be what sustains your marriage and keeps you married until death do you part. May God bless you and be with you as you begin this new chapter of your lives. Amen. Dear friends, when God in love created the world, he made man and woman in his own image and bonded them together in marriage. Through this blessed union of husband and wife, God established the family, provided for the physical and spiritual welfare of children, and fostered the peace and stability of society. God intended marriage to bring loving companionship to people of his world. Because of sin, the joy of marriage was soon overcast with sorrow, and the harmony of family life was shattered by strife. But of love, God sent his son Jesus to die on the cross to take away the sins of all people. Everyone who believes in Jesus receives forgiveness 
and is enabled by the Holy Spirit to live in peace and joy. God's love for you, as we just talked about, is boundless. He commands you in response to his love to love one another. Love is forgiving and enduring. Love shows itself in truth and faithfulness, in thoughtfulness and understanding, in patience and kindness. Marriage furnishes a unique opportunity to put this love into practice. The pattern for Christian marriage is the intimate union of Christ and his church, which the Apostle Paul depicts in Ephesians chapter 5. After urging believers to submit, that means to respond with love and respect to one another out of reverence for Christ, he makes this application for Christian spouses. Wives submit, that is, love, respond with love and respect to your husband as to the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, as Christ is the head of the church. Husbands, love your wives, just as Christ loved the church and gave himself for her. It is reverence for Christ on the part of husband and wife that lays the foundation for Christian marriage. You have come here to be united in marriage, which consists in your mutual consent, sincerely and freely given. You are now invited to declare this intent in the presence of God and all of these witnesses. Ryan, will you take Michelle to be your wife? Will you? We talked about this yesterday. Right here, excited. Will you take Michelle to be your wife? Will you be guided by the counsel and direction God has given in His Word and love your wife as Christ loved the church? Will you be faithful to her, cherish her, support her, and help her in sickness and in health as long as you both shall live? If so, answer, I will. I will. Michelle, will you take Ryan to be your husband? We be guided by the counsel and direction God has given in his word and submit that is respond with love and respect to your husband as the church submits to Christ. We be faithful to him, cherish him, support him, and help him in sickness and in health as long as you both shall live. If so, answer, I will. I will. Join your right hands and make your promises to each other. Ryan, repeat after me. I, Ryan. I, Ryan. In the presence of God and these witnesses. In the presence of God and these witnesses. Take you, Michelle. Take you, Michelle. To be my wife. To be my wife. I promise to be faithful to you. I promise to be faithful to you. As long as we both shall live. As long as we both shall live. Michelle, repeat after me. I, Michelle. I, Michelle. In the presence of God and these witnesses. In the presence of God and these witnesses. Take you, Ryan. Take you, Ryan. To be my husband. To be my husband. I promise to be faithful to you. I promise to be faithful to you. As long as we both shall live. As long as we both shall live. Exchange rings as the symbol of the lifelong commitment and abiding love which you as husband and wife have promised each other. Repeat after me. Michelle, receive this ring. Michelle, receive this ring. As a symbol of my love and faithfulness. As a symbol of my love and faithfulness. Ryan, receive this ring. Ryan, receive this ring. As a symbol of my love and faithfulness. As a symbol of my love and faithfulness. By their promises, Ryan and Michelle had bound themselves together in marriage before God and these witnesses. Therefore, I declare that they are husband and wife. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Those whom God has joined together, let no one separate.
God the Son and God the Holy Spirit preserve you in faithfulness, strengthen you in love, and guide you to life's end. Let us pray. Eternal God, source of love, help Ryan and Michelle to fulfill the promises they have made here today and to reflect your steadfast love and their love for each other. Give them kindness and patience, affection and understanding, happiness and contentment. Use their family and friends to support them in difficult days, that their love for each other may continue to grow as long as they live. Gracious Father, in your goodness you bring people together into families and enrich their lives with abundant blessings. Renew the love of husbands and wives, parents and children, that they may strengthen and support each other on the way that leads to our heavenly home. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we'll join in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. But may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. And I'll present to you Mr. and Mrs. Ryan Feldman. Hi everyone, I'm Brandon, Ryan's best man and also his big brother. I'd first like on behalf of the newlywed to thank everyone for attending um, their amazing celebration this evening. I would also like to say how lovely everyone looks this evening and glad everyone could be here to help celebrate with all of us. I think it says a lot about a man when he chooses his brother to be his best man. Mostly of course it says I have no real friends. <laughs> but to most of us we consider that a blessing. Out of the five of us, four of us being brothers one way or another, we have all known each other most of our lives and have been the shoulder to lean on, help when we need it, or just a friend if we need to talk. We have all grown to really be best friends, not just siblings. Most of us here have been blessed with some great role models in our life, but our parents, Mom, Lee, and Andy, Dad, and our late father, Stefan, have been great role models in many aspects, offering great advice on how to be the best person we can be. Ryan and I have been brothers for 23 years now. And in the course of 23 years, you really get to know someone really well. I've seen him go from the annoying little brother to the slightly less annoying man you see today. <laughs> Ryan and myself have been blessed with, take, with uh, luckily enough, to be taken on lots of exciting vacations and day trips when we were younger. There were more, some of my most embarrassing stories come from. I can think of about 40 stories I could go over, but I'll share a few short, few short ones with you all. I can't think of very many stories that wouldn't make my grandma or my mom mad at me, so I won't talk about those ones. But uh, one that would be a pretty good one to start would be a little time Ryan and I had a snow day. <laughs> mom stayed home, somehow Ryan and I got the idea that it would be fun to run around outside in our underwear. You know, for some reason I think of that, I th I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I was a little nervous. You know, for some reason, I think many of the adults in our life would know that Ryan and I loved to wear underwear on our heads and socks and our hands when we were kids. I don't know why, but that's just what we did. So anyway, back to the story. Um, here we are, it's 20 degrees outside. We're running around in the snow, playing in our underwear. Not a care in the world. Good times for 13-year-old me and 9-year-old Ryan. Ryan was kind of the daredevil. Always doing things a little on the dangerous side when he was young. Like the time we got our new toys. I got a brand new 10-speed bike. Ryan got a brand new two-wheel ripstick. And we were at that park in Lake Mills up on that big hill. And Ryan was racing down this hill on his ripstick. Ryan fell down, swiped his ass all across the floor. I still remember mom picking rocks out of your butt cheeks. So, so if you can see where I'm going with this. Um, I could talk about the next 40 minutes about stories between me and you, or I could talk about your beautiful bride, Michelle. Michelle, you look absolutely beautiful tonight. Thank you for having everybody here. We really appreciate it. And I can think that I have no one else rather join the family. So congratulations and thank you again. 
So uh, now we all know that, that Michelle is a wonderful lady who deserves a great guy, but it's, it's really too bad you don't always do what you deserve. <laughs> and if I could propose a toast, I'd like you all to join me in wishing the new Mr. and Mrs. Felling all the wealth, health, and happiness in the world. To the bride and groom. Before I begin, I'd like to say thank you all for being here and making this day so special for all of us. Uh, Michelle, you look absolutely stunning. What I am, don't look bad yourself. <laughs> for those of you who don't know me, my name is Mariah. Me and Michelle have been best friends since our first year riding the bus together in the sixth grade. Um, we've been inseparable ever since. I decided not to tell any embarrassing stories today because um, they'd also be embarrassing for me and our parents probably don't know about half of them. <laughs> uh, when I first met Ryan, I was a little skeptical. Sorry, Ryan. <laughs> but I soon realized that not only was Ryan a great guy, but he was also perfect for my best friend. The day Ryan proposed, he sent me a picture of the ring and asked my opinion on it. Just no. Just knowing that he wanted my opinion before doing anything means more than he could ever imagine. Michelle also made sure that he knew he'd have to win me over too. <laughs> Not only do I feel blessed to have known Michelle all these years, but I now also feel so privileged to have met someone so special for her. I feel so lucky. Sorry. I feel so lucky to have witnessed the love that they share together, and I couldn't be happy, happier seeing them together. I wish you guys the best, and I can't wait to see what the future holds for you. So please raise your glass with me in congratulating Mr. and Mrs. Thelmy. And I don't want to cry, so I'm just going to keep my short sweet. <laughs> I want to be sure and welcome Ryan to our family and ask that you take very good care of our little girl because she means the world to us. And I'm so proud of. Girl that she's grown. Oh my gosh, that's a blessing. I'm so proud of the young lady that she is growing up to be. And <clears throat> sorry. You got it. I, I wish them the best on their road to their happily ever after. Okay, I am Lee, Ryan's mom. And Ryan, it seems like yesterday that you were so little and well just being Ryan. I remember when you were about 10 years old, you used to tell your grandma and great aunt Mary and me that you were going to become a doctor, buy a big house, hire a housekeeper, and all we would have to do is sit around and have tea parties all day. <laughs> That's a true story. I'm a mom and I remember that, but that really happened. <laughs> then there was the time when you had a school project where you had to run a personal ad for your perfect spouse. And in it you wrote that it would have to be someone that would make you really good sandwiches. <laughs> And he really did write that. <laughs> I have so many memories of my baby boy. Oops, Ryan. I know you didn't want me to say that in front of everyone. I know you have found the woman of your dreams, and of course your eighth grade personal ad too. It makes me smile witnessing the happiness that you have found with your new wife. You truly bring out the best in each other. It's such a joy to watch Michelle make you laugh when she's having one of her blonde moments. <laughs> or the way she can cheer you up when you're having a rough day. I look forward to watching you building a life and a family together. Everything won't always be perfect, but you are perfect together. With God's help, you will have an amazing life together. Michelle, I can't tell you how happy we are to have you join the family and how blessed we feel. And it's so it's such a joy to see the two of you so happy together. I can't wait to see what you accomplish together. Andy and I love you both so much. Welcome to the family, Michelle. To Ryan and Michelle. Let us bow our heads and pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunity to gather together as the friends and family of Ryan and Michelle. We ask that you bless them as they begin their new life together. Uh, let them be guided by your committed love to us. Uh, let that be reflected in their relationship uh, with one another. 
and it may it be a blessing to us that we show that committed love of God uh, to, in our own relationships, whether married or unmarried, uh, to reflect that love of Christ in our life and in this world. We ask that you bless the food that we are about to eat. May it strengthen our bodies so that we can serve you each and every day all the more. We give you thanks, O Lord, for you are good. Your love and mercy endure forever. Amen. Thank you. 
I can get by with nothing With all the blessings life can bring I've always needed something If you ever leave Baby, you would take away everything Good in my life And tell me now How do I live without you? There's a freedom in your arms That carries me through How do I? Oh, how do I? I met you in the sun Saw my plans come undone Cause I knew you were the one So we from Paris on one knee With a letter and a ring Got married in the spring In the day I met you I think I met myself I don't ever wanna be with anyone else We got the that the stars who made the first move? <laughs> Who's gonna be the first one to fall asleep tonight? <laughs> Who will be the first to sleep on the couch? <laughs> Who's the faster driver? <laughs> Who's messier? Who's the first one to make up after a fight? <laughs> Who started the fight in the first place? <laughs> Anybody else in the whole entire world? inside darling all i wanna do is be with you and i know we've got our whole lives no indignance inside darling all i wanna do is be with you tonight Inside, darling, all I wanna do is be with you and I. No, we've got our whole lives. No. It 